Welcome back to our lecture series about the textbook Linear Algebra Done Openly. As usual, I'm your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misselein. Uh, we are in section 5.4 today entitled Cross Products. And now cross products is a type of multiplication between vectors. Uh, but one little caveat I have to mention here, and not a little caveat, it's sort of a big one here. Uh, this cross product is only going to be fine for the vector space F3. That is, we have to have exactly three coordinates. Uh, so our vector u, we can write as u1, u2, u3. And our vector v, uh, we can write as v1, v2, and v3. Uh, now, we're not specifying what the scalars have to be. They just have to come from a field. A little bit later in this lecture, we will restrict to real numbers. But for the moment, we can allow any scalar right here. Um, and so when it comes to two vectors, u and v, we define their cross product, which cr the word cross here just represents the notation to represent the multiplication. Because we're starting to see there's lots of different multiplications of vectors. Uh, there's the dot product, uh, which we take two vectors, u, uh, u dot v, and then this gives us a scalar, right? And as such, this is sometimes called the scalar product uh, or the inner product, right? We had the tensor product before. We had things like U tensor V. So you draw a circle around the X. This would output a matrix. And as such, the, the tensor product sometimes called the matrix product or uh, as we call it, the outer product, right? When you talk about the location of the transpose symbol. Uh, the cross product... Um, is a product of vectors, and it actually produces a vector. If you take u times v, uh, this will give you a vector when you're done. So the dot product gives you a scalar, the tensor product gives you a matrix, and the cross product gives you a vector. And so sometimes it's called the vector product. And so what that vector looks like is the following. Combining the, in the, the coordinates of u and v, the first entry of u times v will be the vector u2 v3 minus u3 v2. You'll notice this is a product of entries from u and v, the second and the third together. Um, do pay attention to the minus sign, and you'll notice that the first entry is nowhere appearing here, so no u1 or v1 there. For the second entry of the cross product, you get u3 times v1. Subtract from that u1 v3. So again, it only involves u1 v1, u3, v3, and you take the, the products of each other and you, you're just going to subtract the product, and the second entry is not used at all. Um, and then lastly, for the third entry of this vector, you get u1, v2, minus u2, v1. So you're combining, again, products between the u's and the v's. You use the first and the second coordinate, but not the third coordinate. So you don't actually use the third coordinate to calculate the third coordinate of the cross product. That's true for the other ones. But then the issue is about, okay, if I take u1 times v2, that's not, uh, you know, you'll, you'll remember to do one and two and two and one, but the presence of the minus sign makes a difference here, right? Um, which one do you subtract? If you just try to memorize this out of context, it kind of feels like alphabet soup and you're gonna have a hard time trying to remember it all. And the main reason we postponed this discussion of cross products until the end of chapter five is so that we can make a connection to determinants because after we've learned how to calculate determinants, turns out it's actually quite straightforward how to calculate uh, cross products. Let me actually go back to the original formula. If you look at the following determinants, two by two determinants, if you take the matrix U2, V3, uh, U2, V2, U3, V3, you calculate its determinant. So you take that cross like that, then you get exactly this formula, U2, V3 minus U3, V2. And then if you take the second one, you're going to take u1, v1, u3, v3. If you take its determinant, you end up with a u1, v3 minus u3, v1, which is this, this formula backwards. But oh, wait, we're going to stick a negative sign to correct that. Uh, the presence of that negative sign will become even more clear in just a second. And then for the last one, you'll take the determinant u1, v1, u2, v2, which when you take the the cross product there, you get, well, the cross product. Oh, okay, there you go. U1, V2 minus U2, V1, like so. And so these formulas you see in the original formula are just uh, determinants of two by two matrices. But why the minus sign right here? Um, and why these determinants? You know, why are we choosing these three? Well, if you take a step down here, I can even make it a little bit more enlightening, uh, more enlightened what's going on here. Consider the matrix three by three matrix you see here, which has the entries E1, U1, V1, E2, U2, V2, and E3, U3, V3. Now it's kind of hard to see here, but these here are bolded. These are vectors. So E1 here, this is the vector 
one, zero, zero. And E2 is the vector zero, one, zero. And lastly, E3 is the vector uh, zero, zero, one. Uh, sometimes these vectors, like in a calculus setting or in like a physics setting, they might call this vector i, uh, this vector j, and this vector here k. Um, in this lecture series, we've been mostly ignoring those labels uh, because they're kind of specific to three dimensions while we work over, you know, multiple dimensions in linear algebra. But again, with the cross product, we're kind of stuck in three dimensions because of this picture we have right here. So with this matrix, if you were to cofactor expand this matrix along the first column, uh, you would end up with E1 times by this determinant right here. That is, uh, you would get the minor U2, V2, U3, V3, which is exactly what you see right here. Or if you did the second one, uh, you get E2 times because you take out this column or this row right here, you get U1, V1, U3, V3. That's exactly what you have right here. Now, of course, uh, the first entry was 1, 1. This is the 2, 1 entry. By rules of cofactor expansion, this first one was a positive, this one's a negative, and then the 3, 1 position should have a positive coefficient. And that's exactly what you see right here. You see this plus minus plus alternation going on. All right. And so uh, that kind of explains why there's a minus sign there. And then lastly, if you take away the third row from the cofactor expansion, of course, you take away the column two, you're going to get E3 times the minor. And so in terms of determinants, it kind of makes sense where this formula comes from. Now, I should, I should try to reassure you here that um, although the second and third columns of this matrix are scalars, the first column here actually consists of vectors. So as of as of yet, we've only put scalars inside of matrices. I'm now allowing for the possibility of pushing vectors or maybe matrices as entries of matrices. Um, notions like of matrix addition, matrix multiplication, determinants can, can also make sense in the situation where we allow for non-scalar entries to be put in here. And so this gives us a situation where we might actually care to have a vector entry in part of the matrix. And this, this cross product is none other than just this determinant. So let's see an example of such a thing, right? Take the vector u to be one, two, negative two, and v to be the vector three, zero, one. Then the cross product of these things we can calculate as the determinant, e1, e2, e3, uh, one, two, negative two. So we have a column for u. And we have a column for V301, like so. Now, I want to mention that uh, one thing to remember here is that when it comes to the determinant, if you have a matrix, the determinant of the transpose is the same thing. Uh, that is taking a determinant, or taking a transpose doesn't affect the determinant. And so when people work with this, sometimes instead of writing them as columns, people prefer to write this as rows. So you have the row vectors E1, E2, E3, uh, and then you write U as a row, 1, 2, negative 2. And you wrote, you write V as a row, three, zero, one. Um, and then, like I said, these E1, E2, E3s are often written as like these other unit vectors, I, J, and K. So like in a physics or a calculus textbook, you might see the determinant or the cross product defined in this manner right here. Again, that's totally equivalent. Uh, so don't feel like you have to do one or the other. Uh, as I usually like to think of vectors as column vectors, I'm going to write them as columns in this determinant, but heck, I wrote it as a row vector right there, so you can do either one. So if we cofactor expand along the first column, uh, let's see, if we take out the first row and first column like that, you can see your minor that's left behind. Uh, that'll give us two, zero, negative two, one times E1. And then for the next one, since you're gonna subtract it, second row, second column, you'll get the, the, the minor one, three, negative two, one. One, three, negative two, and one, E2. And then lastly, uh, if you take off the third row, first column, you get the minor one, three, two, and zero, like so. And so if we calculate these two by two determinants uh, for the first one, you'll get two, one minus zero times negative two. Uh, that'll give you a 2 
as your first entry. Uh, for the next one, uh, you're going to get 1, 1 minus, si uh, minus a negative 6. That actually gives us a 7. Uh, but don't forget the negative sign that's in front there. You actually get a negative 7 for your second entry. And then for the last one, uh, you take 1, 0 minus 3, 2. That's going to give you a negative 6, which we'll record right here. And so let me write that 6 a little bit better. So that gives us our cross product there, 2, negative 7, negative 6. Uh, and so you can use you can use this uh, determinant calculation to help you remember the cross product. Now, admittedly, in terms of computational speed, it'll be faster just to plug those six numbers into the original formula. So if you were to put this in like a computer program, just memorize the formula for the program and plug them in there. But as a student where it's just like I just memorizing random symbols, it seems crazy. But if you see it in the context of the determinant, it's hard not to remember uh, these formulas right here.